Good morning and welcome to Alan Earth's Presbyterian Church. God, you have given us everything. What can we give in return for our lives? Be our guide on our Lenten journey. Help us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow you. May we find direction in our lives as we worship you today. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. Let us turn our minds from human things. Let us set our minds on divine things. We will deny ourselves and take up our cross. We will lose all that we may gain all. Come, let us worship God. Trusting in God's promises of forgiveness, let us confess our sin and repent by praying, merciful God, we confess that our sin turns us from you again and again. We are a sinful generation longing for your mercy. We want not only to save our lives, but to gain the whole world as well. We are too often ashamed to show our faith to the world around us. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. Friends, in God's mercy, we are declared righteous through our faith in Jesus, who died for our sins. Thanks to Christ's sacrifice, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And now, would you please join me in our prayer for illumination? Holy Spirit, Open our hearts to receive your word. Reveal to us the good news and enable us to trust in the promise of salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Psalm 22, chapters 23, verses 23 through 31. Listen now for the word of the Lord to the church this day. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down before him, shall bow all who go down to the dust, and 
I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our New Testament reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Listen once more for the word of the Lord to the church this day. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come, open our hearts and minds to what you have us here this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text this morning is a familiar one, where we find Jesus speaking a very familiar phrase. If anyone to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. What I had not really thought about before when reading this piece of scripture is that while we look at Jesus saying this from our side of the cross, at the time Jesus spoke these words, the cross Jesus still had to bear loomed large in front of him. Something that was set off in the future. Something he knew was coming, but those around him did not. So I find myself curious as to what the people surrounding Jesus thought was the cross that they might have to bear. Did they hear Jesus' words as a rallying cry, a charge into battle, a gathering of soldiers ready for deployment? Did they envision themselves carrying their own crosses, implements of Roman torture along with Jesus and a sign of solidarity to a hill called Golgotha, shouting to the authorities, if you are going to crucify him, you will have to crucify all of us. While I believe the Romans might have gladly taken them up on that offer, I don't think that's what Jesus had in mind. Instead, I believe Jesus was also thinking about things from the far side of the cross and about other crosses his disciples and those following him were likely going to have to bear. And not just the few who would actually end up crucified on a cross for their beliefs, but all the other small but not insignificant crosses we each have to bear throughout our lives as Christians. Those crosses we bear where only our faith can save us, save us, redeem us, and make us whole again. But here is something else I feel is worth considering. If Jesus was <laughs> looking at his own bearing of the cross from our side of the cross, 
then Jesus also knew that even when bearing his own cross, he could not do it alone. Because as we know, when Jesus was struggling with the cross he had to bear, there came a point where another man came alongside him and helped Jesus to bear his own cross up a hill. And that, my friends, points us to something very significant about cross-bearing. And that is, well, we know we must take up our own cross and follow Jesus, just as Jesus called us to do. We can also take comfort in knowing that even Jesus needed help bearing his own cross. Which says to me, we, we not only have our own crosses to bear, but we also have each other to help bear our crosses. Do you see someone struggling with the cross that they are bearing? Come alongside them and help them bear their cross. Call them, text them, write them, message them, post an uplifting message, offer to help out, get involved, reach out, share what you have, give what you can. There are so many ways that we can help bear each other's crosses. And I believe the bearing of crosses is not just a one-on-one -on -one thing, but it's something we're called to do collectively as a church. And one reason why the church is so very important. When someone is struggling under the weight of the cross they are bearing, the church is also called to be there. Help steady the load. Because truth be told, helping each other is one of the primary things the church should always be doing. Of course, such a concept is contrary to the ways of our individualistic culture. But the truth is we all need a little help from time to time. And what better place to find it than from within the church family. One thing the church is sometimes called is a fellowship of believers. It's called this because as a church, we are called to be in fellowship with one another, to gather together for worship and mission and to share our lives with one another. However, I believe church fellowship is often misunderstood. Because when we think of church fellowship, we often simply think about the church as any other social gathering. Where church fellowship is simply becomes associated with sharing a potluck meal, talking with each other about the weather or sports, or discussing the news. When church fellowship should be about sharing our lives, encouraging one another, and helping each other bear their crosses. The problem is that most people hide their needs from others. But if we are really going to help one another, we need to get close enough to one another and allow each other to see what crosses we are bearing and then find ways to help each other with the crosses they are bearing. This morning, I want to encourage you to look at your church and your church family a little differently not simply as a social gathering, not only as a place of worship or a place you come to feed your spiritual soul, but also a place of healing and hope. A place where you can find others willing to help you to bear your own cross. And as a place where you can help someone else to bear theirs. This is one of the biggest reasons I believe the church as a physical place is so very important and something I can't wait to get back to. Because while we have found in this pandemic-driven virtual world of worship is that we could all worship with a lot less trouble 
than having to get up early on Sunday, get ourselves and our kids dressed for church and in the car on time, and drive to a church building for worship. But instead, we can just stay in our comfy clothes, watch the service when we want to, and not spend half the day doing church. It's pretty convenient, right? And because of that, is now how some people are considering doing church on into the future, long after the pandemic is behind us. While this may work for some and is also something desperately needed for those physically unable to attend worship in person, I also believe such isolated worship by those physically able to attend misses out on an important aspect of our Christian faith. The true one-on-one -on -one support of a church family. Because, be, because to be a part of a physical church family is to be a part of something that is tangible, that hopefully holds within it caring and nurturing and compassionate souls willing to reach out and hold a hand, offer a hug, a knowing smile, or a listening ear. A church family is one that understands what it means to stumble and fall and yet to be forgiven. That understands our need for connection. And that truly supports one another. Where we all become strengthened in faith by each other. Where we know that we always have a group of people willing to come alongside of us while we are struggling with the cross we have to bear. And they will bend down and take hold of our cross and help us to bear it, understanding we do not have to bear our crosses alone, but that we have Jesus. We have each other. We have a church family to help us along the way. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I want to just uh, lift up a couple of things for the church that will be coming up. We do have a work day on March 6th, and we'll also be having a Zoom worship with communion on Sunday the 14th. Also, uh, in your uh, packet that we send out for our in-home worship, there is your Easter lily form that you can cut out and send back in to the church uh, with payment and um, in memory, honor, or celebration of someone as you buy a lily uh, for our Easter Sunday worship and help us to uh, decorate the church. For our Easter Holy Week, uh, we'll have our Palm Sunday as an in-home worship and will be available on YouTube and Facebook. Our Monday Thursday service will be a Zoom worship service with communion at 7 p.m. on April 1st. And then we will get back together again um, on Easter Sunday morning at 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall, uh, where we'll have temperature checks, masks, and social distancing, and we'll have all the doors and windows open um, to be safe and comfortable in that environment, getting together for our Easter Sunday morning worship. So I hope you can join us for that on Easter Sunday. For our prayer concerns this morning, I just want to lift up uh, Dick Goff, who uh, was had to be hospitalized, um, had another one of his spells, and so we need to be praying for Dick at this time. I know there are lots of uh, people who are on our minds and hearts this morning. I know many of you have many people on your hearts and minds. And while that does bring us down and while we struggle knowing people that we care about are hurting, we know that we can always go to the Lord. So let us go to the Lord and let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for walking beside us. 
We bring our crosses to you and lay them at your feet as we turn around and help others to bear their crosses. Help us to do that in whatever way we can. This morning we pray for Dick Goff, pray for healing and help for him. Pray for all those who are sick, who are grieving, who are sad, who are lonely, who are depressed. And pray for all the children and all the school children who are going back to school once again in many places. And pray for their health and their safety. Continue to be with us during this pandemic. Continue to take it away from us that we might get back to worshiping you in your house of worship. Thank you for sending your son to not only save us, but to teach us how it is we are to live And also teaching us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will affirm our faith and this morning we're going to use um, the brief statement of faith, an excerpt from that, um, to affirm our faith with. In life and in death we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe in the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. My charge for you this day is that you go out. And you think about not only the cross that you are bearing and how you can offer that up to Jesus, but also think about ways that you can kneel down and help somebody else bear their cross. Let's be mindful of that in the days ahead along this Lenten journey. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious on you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace.